Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be talking about some EDC stuff. Not only how to, but items you need to look into and take into account whether you are new to the EDC game or whether you're old, thinking about changing things up to help you EDC like a boss. If you're asking yourself how we're going to do that or what we're going to talk about, it's going to revolve around what I call the four C's. Now this is what I use when I'm out there teaching friends or family or teaching somebody that's new and kind of help them out and get them kind of in that mindset of what to look for when they're going to be buying something. And those four C's are going to be capacity, concealability, clothing, and comfort. If you think about it, you got to take all that stuff into account to make sure you're going to have what you need out there and actually be able to carry it. Now, those are all very important to carrying things around with you. But for my people out there that actually wake up and wear your wife's yoga pants or shirts out there, you might not be able to get away with carrying as much as possible. You've got to dress a certain way to be able to conceal things appropriately and carry around what you want or what you think you're going to need out there. Well, if this is your first time here, go ahead and get subbed up, get belled up, turn the notifications to all notification icons on down there. And if you've been here for a while, double check that stuff is done. If at any point you like what's going on or feel I deserve it, give that video a thumbs up. So we're going to talk about a couple things that are, I guess, the elements of the EDC. Obviously, that's going to be your EDC item, a holster, a belt, and then, of course, that clothing that we have touched on already. All of those play an integral part in how you're going to dress, what you're going to be able to carry to get things done out there. Well, let's go ahead and break down holsters first. Now, we're going to talk about everything from appendix in the waistband style holsters like that to out of the waistband holsters like this Bravo concealment one set up on that blue alpha belt because there are comfort level difference, there are different styles within those two, and then of course there are concealability differences in how much you're gonna print. So if you don't know what printing means is, if you're wearing something under you and say the pistol grip is pushing out like that and somebody can see it, that's what printing is called, your ability to see that something's being hid under clothing. Now, as far as in the waistband holsters, you're gonna have a lot of them like this, which are kind of those uh, sidecar, psychic, everybody's got a different name for them. And then just the holster that's gonna carry the item itself. And that's gonna be a personal choice depending on capacity, which we're gonna to touch on more in a minute. There are big differences between those style of holsters, where you can conceal them on your body and how comfortable they are going to be. Now we'll go ahead and roll in some footage right here, wearing that appendix holster only right here. And you can kind of see where that's gonna fit, how it conceals, but you can wear that style of holster other parts of your body in the like, you know, three o'clock position or even maybe a little bit past that. Now, if you don't know what those positions are, appendix is right in front of you like you just saw in that video. The three o'clock position, you have to think about your body. The front of you is noon. This would be three o'clock, six o'clock behind you. So when someone is talking about a clock position on their body, that is what they mean. So if I move that same holster over into say the three o'clock position on my hip, it's a little bit more comfortable, but you're going to print more. As I bend over in this shirt, you'll be able to see that pistol grip is punching out. And if I bend far enough, sometimes my shirt can actually come up over that pistol grip and you'll completely expose what you are trying to concealed carry, which is obviously not optimal. Now wearing in the three o'clock is a little bit more comfortable than in the appendix rig in the front, but it's a little bit slower, right? So if you go to draw, you may have to cant your body kind of weird come back because of how high it is on your belt line. Whereas the appendix in the front is just far quicker to draw, come out, and be able to present your pistol onto target. The one thing you have to remember about appendix rig right there is it's pointed at your naughty bits. So you have to be well trained and very comfortable carrying in that position. Now moving right into the out of the waistband style holsters like this on that blue alpha belt. These are gonna be a little bit more comfortable. You maybe don't have as many different decisions on where you can carry that but there are some trade-offs for that comfort. Obviously, as you can see, the reason I set this up like this is you can see how much further it's gonna stick out off of your body as compared to one of those inside the waistband holsters. That is going to provide you maximum comfort, but it's not going to provide you maximum concealment depending on your clothing, which we'll get more into in just a minute. But as you can see here, it may be a little bit more difficult to draw because it's higher up. And if I bend forward, it's definitely going to print a lot more. And this is where you see those pictures of people where they're walking around the store and maybe that shirt is pulled up over the pistol grip of what they're carrying, trying to conceal. But at some point their shirt has been pulled over that pistol grip. That is definitely something you need to take into account. If you're not wearing like a jacket or a flannel or something over that item, 
it could be easily exposed. All right, moving right on into belts. There are options out there for everybody, whether you are looking for something that's more dress-like, this Core Essentials leather one, or whether you want their kind of more tactical looking ones, or whether you want a full-on Cobra buckle style belt like this one right here. Uh, again, there is an option for everybody, but there are certain things that you really need to look for in a belt because a leather belt off the rack at a department store is just not going to work very well. One of the first things you're gonna to need to pay attention to on a belt is the buckle. You want a good, solid, strong buckle that's gonna last well, but you don't want something too big or too thick. You don't wanna be wearing the big rodeo buckle because that could really interfere with how and where you're going to be able to carry, uh, depending on how you carry out there and how you choose to wear inside the waistband, outside the waistband or whatever. The next thing you're gonna need is stiffness. That belt has to be a good stiffness level for it to not sag or kind of, you know, pull down on one side or the other to be able to actually support the weight of what you are carrying. But you don't want it so stiff to the point that you really are not comfortable actually wearing the belt. Now, there are a bunch of different belts out there that you can choose for that. Uh, the Blue Alpha Gear, like I said, I love that belt. It's plenty stiff, dual layered nylon, but it's not overly thick, very easy to buckle on and off. And of course, that Core Essentials belt has turned out to be awesome with that infinite adjustment. You also do have the Groove Life belt, which is very, very thin, has a little bit of stretch to it, magnetic buckle, super thin, but it's for very light EDC, something like a 43 or a 365 XL. As far as the clothing goes, that really depends on you and what you wanna wear. Dress to where you don't print, again, Printing is where somebody could notice whatever you are concealing under your shirt or clothing, pushing out so they can identify there is something in there. Dress appropriately for what you're gonna carry. Moving right into concealability, because that is directly related to size, whether you are carrying a big old knife in a scabbard or a Kydex holster, or a micro compact, subcompact, slim line, whatever it is out there you are carrying, the concealability is directly related to the size, which is also correlated with capacity most of the times, more on that in a second, but just think about it. It's a lot easier to get away with concealing this out there than it is a big Glock 21. You have to think about that when you're purchasing your items because if you can only get one, you may wanna get one that fits multiple roles. And again, I will roll in some footage of some things right down the line here, everything from that 43X to a Glock 19, to a big old 1911 or a Glock 21, because all of those are going to carry far different than the next. One may be good for outside the waistband and one may not be good at all for outside the waistband. You just gotta kinda figure out what you need and what your planned carrying intention is for it, because that's gonna determine what you're gonna wanna buy. And again, that size is awfully directly correlated to capacity but not always with all of the micro compacts and slim lines with the Shield Arms 15 plus magazines. If you think about it, this big old 1911 right here only has eight to 10 rounds in it, depending on your magazine or as low as seven. Whereas something like this 43X again in that Bravo concealment holster with a Shield Arms mag has 15 rounds in it. So you've got to think about that too. Oftentimes when the capacity goes up, the size is going up to an extent on how many rounds you wanna carry. And pushing right into capacity because that is what people fight about non-stop. Capacity, shot placement, all that stuff. Pick something that you feel comfortable with. There are multiple different ways to carry. Like I said, the 43X with a Shield Arms mag, that's 15 rounds. You can also have holsters like this one from LAS Concealment that has my 19 in it and a spare mag. That gives you a lot of rounds up there. You just have to determine how you wanna carry. Do you wanna carry off body? Uh, do you wanna carry inside the waistband and have a Neo mag, a spare mag in your pocket? Or do you want a holster like that where everything is right there in the front? That's gonna be a very personal decision for what you decide to carry, what you decide to buy, and kind of maybe you know that ongoing EDC, you might pick up one or two holsters and depending on your clothing, carry a little bit of a different way. And finally, the comfort. Let's just face it, if you're not comfortable, you're probably not gonna be carrying. You need to choose the appropriate belt, the appropriate clothing, the ap appropriate size, and the capacity that makes you feel comfortable, whether it's all on board in the one magazine or whether you want a secondary magazine. 
You've got to find a system that is comfortable for you to carry around so you'll actually carry everywhere you go. Because if you're not comfortable, you're gonna end up not carrying what you should or just not carrying at all. And the last thing that nobody likes to talk about, there are rules to this game, right? Rule number one, follow the law. The last thing you wanna do is get in trouble for not knowing your local laws, ordinance, or where you can and can't carry something like a post office. Remember, there are restrictions, even if you have a concealed carry permit, where you can actually carry. Rule number two, and this is like the golden rule, don't be a dick. Don't be the person out there that's confrontational, looking for confrontation, because you'll probably find it, and that's not gonna put you in a good decision, which leads me right into rule number three, which is conflict. Avoid it at all costs. You do not wanna become involved in a use of force scenario. Trust me, I have seen that play out. Just avoid conflict. You get chest bumped in the store or at a concert or you know walking through a bar, just let it go. Apologize, walk away, be nice to people because you'd be surprised when somebody thinks there's gonna be an aggressive response where if you hit them with some kindness, it changes the entire dynamic. So just remember that, always walk away from conflict. And number four, carry insurance or legal protection. You need to protect yourself, your property, and your family. Part of that is going to be having something like USCCA. I'm a member of that. I've been a member of that for a long time. It protects me, it protects my family, it protects my belongings. You've got to have some form of legal protection, carry insurance, whatever it is. And that also, if depending on which one you go with, can offer you a decent level of training and opportunity to train as well. Which leads me right into rule number five, and that is train. You've got to not only seek out training if you're brand new, but you have to train on going and you have to train with how you're actually carrying. I love running around in full kit with all of my cool military gear on, stuff that I haven't worn for like real life and a job for several years now, but it's fun. That's just not how I carry 99% of the time. That's when I'm out on the range having fun with my buddies. Most of the time I'm wearing gym shorts or cargo shorts, a t-shirt. I'm carrying the Glock 43 and appendix or sometimes carrying off body in my urban discreet bag. And if you have to carry off body, a minimal small bag will get it done. Something like the DDT Assassin, DDT Urban Discreet. I've got videos on both of those and you can check those out, but you've got to train how you carry. If you train a completely different way, should the time ever come, you're not gonna be proficient how you're carrying when the situation happens. Whether it's dry fire practice at home or live fire practice out on the range, you've got to do something to keep up that level of proficiency. Well, that is what I've got for you all today. I hope you guys liked learning that and I hope it was really helpful to you guys. And for those of you out there that have been through this before or new, let me know what your biggest kind of hurdle was getting into EDC or finding a holster, a belt, or whatever was comfortable for you guys to carry. Uh, I have playlists for those holsters, for all of that stuff. I will leave linked down below whether it's the bags I talk about, the belts, the whole, all that stuff is linked down below. Huge shout out to all of my patrons. If you're interested in any of that stuff, I'll try to leave links down below for you. We can't leave everything here because it's not allowed on the platform anymore. But you can always go to my website, tacticalconsiderations.com and check out our coupon codes and links for all of that gear and stuff under like gear, EDC gear, coupon codes, all that stuff, it is there for you guys. Make sure you guys get subbed up, get belled up, turn those notification icons on. If you like what was going on here, give the video a like. And remember, if you guys stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready, and I will see you guys on the next one.